Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at drawing this lovely little red squirrel. So I've got this picture from Pixabay as I do with many of my pictures I use here on YouTube uh, and I will put the link to this photograph down below in the description and it's a beautiful photograph and you can see his little um, hair stuck up on the top of his ears. It's very very detailed, very detailed in the eye a really really lovely clear photograph of this super red squirrel. So the picture itself has obviously been taken by a very good photographer and he's set it up on a feeding station. So around the squirrel we've got all these little bits of the feeding station and things. So we're just going to completely ignore that and perhaps put him more in a setting that would be more natural to him with maybe more green in the background or even just do the drawing of the squirrel with a plain background. But I'll leave that up to you. But don't feel you need to draw in things like the feeding station. That was obviously there in order to attract him to take this beautiful photograph. So like I say, we've got a lot of detail here. They're a very small animal. Um, and they're probably not too fleshy. A lot of this is fur and fluff. So we're going to need to get that feeling of that fluff um, and that light feeling of it being a, of a small animal. Now I usually start by drawing the head. But when you're doing that, don't forget that you need to leave space for the rest of the picture and you need to think about where it's going on your canvas or your paper. So really it's fitting into more or less a square. So that's quite a nice composition. I've got um, a big pad here, but you could just do him on a nice square piece of paper and that would look quite cute. Or a little square canvas even. So I'll start with the head, but I will leave space obviously to fit all this tail in. You don't want to start with the head here and then realise you've run out of paper. So just before you start, have a think about that and a think about where everything's fitting in. And take a few minutes just to sit with the photograph and look at where things are lining up um, and look at where you're going to be, you know... Um, fitting things together. So if you look the top of his ears is just below the top of his tail there not including these little bits of fluff. His actual ears are to there and then this is just hair. Look at where his toes line up to his mouth and his eye. You know in your finished picture if you've got his toes here or here then they're not lining up in the right place. So all these kind of things. His little hands line up sort of halfway across his tail and to where his hip is actually. So if we look here at the way the fur's going across here there's probably his hip under there somewhere and that's where his hands lining up and then we've got his elbow here so just have a think about where things are fitting and if we look at the hair here you can see it going over and that's because it's going over his arm and over his shoulder there and that's a good thing about having so much detail on this picture you can really see where his anatomy is and where you want those lines to be going so make sure that the hairs when you start putting the hairs on you're not just doing them all in one direction and not thinking about where they're going they're actually going in lots of different directions. This one's coming over his leg here and then we've got this going over his back and it sort of changes as it comes closer to his leg. Here we've got it going back. So the hair is going to make the shape of his body and make him more 3D. So I'll go ahead and make some guidelines with the pencil. Like I say, I'll start with his, his head. I'm just using a very loose shape there. I'm not starting to put in any detail. And then his body going back and sort of down. Got his leg there. So make it nice and free, this part of the drawing. And think about that square that we talked about earlier. You're fitting most of that into a square shape. So you've got that shape of his tail keep your arm nice and free so this line here if we look here is going quite sharply that way it's much narrower at the bottom and then out with his tail so think about the area that you're fitting him into and then look at this lovely swoop here you come down across his neck and round and you've got that sort of lazy S shape so look at where these lines things like that that catch your eye that are nice curves and then perhaps sort of Think about where his feet might fit into that. Like I said earlier, they come sort of along here in line. And of course we can alter things as we go along. So I'm going to put more detail on this now with the pencil. Get rid of some of the earlier lines. And then I'll come back to you when we're going to put some ink on him.
Today I thought I would do my drawing using ink so I'm going to use De La Rowney ink and it's the acrylic one and this one is sepia you could have yours, of course used black if you wanted to or you could use an ink pen or if you wanted you could just carry on with your pencil that's absolutely fine but I thought I'd not use this acrylic ink for a while this nice sepia one so I'm going to give that a go I'm just going to use um, a dip pen to do that with so when you're working with a dip pen it's a good idea to always have some water handy and some tissues just in case of accidents so I'm going to go ahead now and carry on with the drawing getting much more detail in with the pen some of the hairs I'm not going to do all of the hairs um, but just to get a feel for the direction that they're going and things and we can of course emphasize that when we come to put the paint on as well so I'll continue with the pen and I'll come back to you when we put some paint on
okay so I think that's enough ink for now I've, as you can see I've tried to keep it quite loose and quite free and I've, I've ended up with him looking quite scruffy but I think that's the feel that we get from this photograph isn't it we get all these hair and it's going in all directions and he's you know he's quite a cute little fella and it gives it a little bit of movement um, because obviously they move very quickly the squirrels don't they so it's uh, just keeping it nice and free and not being over fussy with it and letting your arm move and getting some movement in there is going to all help get that feel for his character so as you can see when you use the acrylic ink it does tend to come out quite quickly at times and you end up with pools and you need that to be completely dry before you start thinking about removing any of your pencil guidelines and putting any paint on. So you might want to leave it overnight or just for a couple of hours just to make sure it's absolutely dry before you go on to the next stage. Obviously that's not as important if you've done it in pencil or if you've done it in um, ink pens then it will dry much quicker. If you have used acrylic ink at this stage it can be nice sometimes just to introduce a little bit of water to those areas um, that are still wet so I've just got a tiny bit of water on my brush and just to get some shadow underneath him as if he's sat on something solid and that's just going to plant him on the ground and so just with the water let the water touch the ink and let it go into it and that gives quite a nice feel with the, these inks and also if there's any areas where you think you might need a lot of shadow so here it's very much in shadow here so you might just want to gently touch that ink and allow it to flow out now this is something that requires practice you don't want to add too much water you want to be very careful with this so there's quite a pool here so we'll come down allow it to touch that pool don't actually put your brush in that and then bring it out just allow the water to touch it and allow the water to move the ink for you so we'll just look if there's any more areas where it's a little bit darker so it's quite dark here so I'm just going to lift a little bit of ink from here and pop it into that water this gives us that bit of tone there and again in his ears it's quite dark so you're sort of starting to add paint in a way but using using the ink so for the, those of you that have used the acrylic ink that's quite a nice technique just to start and build up some shapes and then leave it completely dry come back take off that pencil and then start with your paint okay so that's probably enough for now I should imagine a little bit there it's quite a nice way of working and actually you can make a drawing just like this and not even bother with the paint I'm gonna to have to stop fiddling and leave this to dry now that's completely dry I'm going to put some paint on I've decided just to use three colors and to keep it very simple I'm not going to do a background you of course could go on and do a background you could go on to somewhere like Pixabay and get some images of some trees and the thing is when you're doing things like that try and keep it in keeping so red squirrels are found around here in Cumbria so you don't want to have some tropical palm trees just just think along those lines try and find some native trees um, and things that would naturally be behind behind a squirrel or you could just do a green background um, and keep it very loose but I'm just going to leave it white so the areas that are lighter I'll probably just leave white and I'm just going to use these three colors now if you look at him he's got quite a lot of gray in as well and I'm not really going to worry too much about that I'm just going to look more at the tone leave those out for the time being so I've just mixed up three colors so I've got um, burnt sienna burnt sienna mixed with french ultramarine and new gamboge to have some nice light areas so if you look here you can see where it's a little bit on the yellow side where the light's catching so i wanted to keep him nice and colorful and not worry about those grays and things too much um, and really burnt sienna straight out of the pan without any other colors mixed is a perfect color for a red squirrel so to begin with i'm just going to wet the whole thing So just wet the squirrel himself and I may actually just do an area at a time to save it drying. So I'm not going to go over his eye because I don't want the red colour to go into his eye there. 
So I'll just wet his head carefully around the eye, do his ears, and just a little few flicks of water up into where those hairs are going off. And then we'll just drop these colours in. We've already got some form there with the pen. We don't want to cover the pen work up. So just pop the colour into where you can see the colour most. So coming down here. And then his little nose is much paler. So we'll just leave that and those colours will just nicely blend away there. Maybe a little touch of yellow here and there. We want it to be a little bit brighter. And some darker areas is darker in the centre of his ear. Just to get a bit of variety, he's darker under here. You'll remember we put some ink under there before as well, so that's going to make that even darker, just building that tone up. Okay, and then I'll go on and do part of his body. By doing a little bit at a time, you're not allowing that water to dry out too much. And that, of course, really depends on the time of year, how quickly things are drying. I do apologise, you might be able to hear um, the hedge trimmer in the background. That's my husband actually trimming the hedge around the back of my greenhouse at the moment. So I'm not going to stop him because I've actually been asking him to do it for weeks. So I do apologise for the noise if you can hear that. I didn't actually wet his little hands, did I? So that, that sienna is really obvious there and over his little wrist and arm. Anywhere it's a bit lighter, just don't pop as much on. And one or two bits of the darker colour here and there. We've already got that form there. Then down to his leg, his tummy and his little feet. So have plenty of colour made up ready, then you're not having to make it up whilst you're doing it. It makes it much more easy doing your painting if you've got plenty of colours made up ready. So his feet are pretty much all sienna. And his little tummy's more or less white. And there's much more colour and tone on his, his leg there. A bit more colour on this. I call it an arm, it's not an arm, is it? It's a leg, but we, we can call it an arm. Maybe a little bit of yellow here and there, just for some highlights. Sun shining on the top of his arm there and down here and over his shoulder. Trying to keep it quite loose. Like I said earlier, we've already got that quite detailed drawing there. We don't need to be drawing with our paint too much. So with the tail, go all the way around with some water and then just flick it out. So, not just blanket covering the whole thing, just go with that shape of the tail there. 
By putting the water on first, you're just giving it a softer effect. You might prefer to work wet on dry and make it more detailed. Of course, that's up to your own personal choice and your style. Again, there's bits of grey in this tail, but we're not going to worry too much about them. So use your wrist to flick out the paint so you get those nice fluffy shapes of his tail there. And of course there are some darker areas, it's much darker here. But you probably don't want to go as dark as the original photograph because you do want those lines to show of your drawing and you do want that watercolour-y feel. Can you see how we've got a dry edge there? Nicer just to soften that off with a damp brush. Just tweak things a little bit. I'm just going to wet this area and allow some of the colours from the edges of that to go in there because although it's white it's not it's still in the shadow so it's not completely white we know it's white fur but it's still got shade on it and the same here as well that's very much in the shadow so it's quite dark under there can you see how it's pooling a little bit there so just take some of that out and you might want to look at this stage and see if you want any highlights lifting out with a dry brush. And indeed if you want to add some extra paint. So we're going to add some extra colour here. It's really quite red there. And at this stage you can either allow it to dry and then put some more on top and come on with some more detail or you might just want to leave it here. I think it's nice to leave it here, keep it nice and loose, keep your drawing showing through. His hand's very, arm should I say is very red as well. And I think I'm going to call that a day. We'll see what he looks like when he's dried. But I think that's uh, probably enough for me. And I don't want to be, like I said, doing any background. I'll just leave him as he is. A nice scruffy little squirrel. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Like I say, the photograph is linked down below in the description. And it's a gorgeous photograph. You don't need to print it off. You could just work from your monitor. Um, so go ahead and find that on Pixabay. There's some lovely pictures there to have a look around. Um, enjoy your painting and drawing and I'll be back again with you next week with another tutorial or demonstration. Thank you very much for watching and bye for now.